Over 99% of all animals to ever exist are gone. They are extinct. Some of the coolest ones in recent years, finally gone. But what if I told you just because they're gone doesn't mean they're not coming back? Today, let's talk about the top five species we are about to de-extinct in our lifetime. De-extinction is a hot topic, and of course it's controversial. Should we even be doing this in the first place? Are we playing God? Or is it you think? I want you to let me know in the comment section below, should we be doing this at all? But for this video, I'm just going over what has already been put in place that there's already wheels in motion to de-extinct these animals, if it's even possible in the first place. For example, it's at this point impossible to de-extinct a T-Rex. Not that it would be a good idea, but we'll get more into why that is impossible and why things like number five, the quagga, are definitely possible. Now the quagga is a really cool zebra subspecies. It's a subspecies of the plain zebra. However, up until well after they were extinct, they were thought to be a species all on their own. Up until the early 1800s, quagga could be seen in herds of 30 to 50 roaming all over South Africa. But by the middle of the 1800s, their population has been decimated, and by 1878, they were completely gone. Now the good news is they did live in captivity in zoos until 1883, but that's really not that long of a time period. And the reason they were kept in captivity in zoos is because we tried to breed them in captivity. This often happens. When there's an animal, you know it's functionally extinct, which just means basically there's no way they're gonna be able to outbreed the issues that are causing their extinction in the first place. They're functionally extinct. So some ways to get around that are to bring them in and have human intervention. And then we can breed them in controlled spaces where there's, they're less likely to get disease, drought, no famine, no predation, things like that, that in the wild would kill them. Now these definitely were zebras, but a subspecies. So instead of the iconic white and black striping, they had more of a black and brown striping. And they looked a little different from their shoulders all the way to their butt. And with their shoulders standing at four or four and a half feet tall, these were a regular size zebra. Or that's to say one that you'd see in a zoo of similar size. In what was once an abundant animal all over the plains of South Africa, only 23 skins actually remain to this day. What's interesting is the death of the last one in 1883 wasn't even seen as the death of the last one. Because the people in South Africa at the time called all zebra quagga, the people in North America and Europe thought, well, you can just go get another one. And they sent out hunters to get another one, but they never returned with one because they were gone. Now, the reason that we think they're gonna be de-extincted, de -ex there's a de-extinction effort, let's say, is because of the Quagga project in South Africa where they're working to de-extinct them. Now, they don't have the right DNA from this animal to clone the animal, which is something we'll get into. So instead, they're trying to selectively breed it with a different species that is very closely related to the Quagga. So we'll never really get a true Quagga again, but we can get something that looks and acts very similar to what a true Quagga was. Something that is the only chance we have really at this point to get something Quagga-like. Number four, maybe the most famous and exciting one on the list, woolly mammoths. Woolly mammoths were giant elephant-like beings that were all over North America and Northern Europe, basically north of the equator. It is thought that it was about a half a million years ago when they started to appear all the way until about 4,000 years ago. In fact, up until 20,000 years ago, they were in their heyday. There was more of them than any time on earth. And by about 10,000 years later, 10,000 years from today, they started to see a massive decline. And by 4,000 years ago, they were completely gone. The exact cause is not really agreed upon. A lot of it is to do with human hunting. Now think about it, these are six to eight ton animals. This is a ton of meat. If you and your group get a hold of a woolly mammoth and are able to subdue it, kill it, and then butcher it and eat it, this is gonna last a long time. This is so much meat. So this was a prized kill for primitive people. If you got a hold of one of these, you're eating great. Way easier than catching 78 rabbits to feed the same amount of people for one meal, never mind tons and tons of meals throughout a week, month, however big your group is, depending that's how long these animals would last. The other issue is, 
Perhaps they just couldn't keep up with the warming climate. Something to realize is even before humans knew anything about fossil fuels, the environment was changing, it was warming. And because of that, it's possible that these animals died out. Now we have collected soft tissue that was in permafrost in parts of Siberia. So we have the DNA sequence. We've sequenced the DNA. The problem is it likely isn't possible to just straight up clone these animals. However, 99% of the genome is the same as the current day elephants that we have roaming the earth right now, which means that it is possible to start putting DNA from woolly mammoths into the eggs of elephants. Well, there's a bunch of different ways. More or less, you're gradually adding mammoth genes to elephant cells. It's also possible to gather enough DNA that could be mammoth sperm and then put it into the egg of an elephant and then use the elephant to carry the baby. I mean, this is not a science show, but to the point is mammoths might be walking around again in our lifetime. The Pyrenees mountain range is a mountain range that straddles the border of Spain and France. And up until very recent times, a majestic, beautiful creature with a wonderful gate, these majestic horns, and a stunning coat reigned supreme as the biggest and most powerful undulate of that area. The Pyrenean Ibex went extinct so recently, this is a real picture. It's not colorized, it's not edited, this is what they looked like because up until 1999, you could find them in a small part of Spain of this mountain range. Now this is a subspecies of the Iberian Ibex, but nonetheless, something that is no longer with us, but possibly could be exactly it, the way it was before. Around the 1800s, the population started to deeply decline, very steeply, and that's just simply because, well, we actually don't know. There was definitely poaching going on, and there was competition from other undulates in the area, so it could be a combination of both. This subspecies was considered extinct in the year 2000, but it didn't take long because in 2003, we made another one as humans. On July 30th, 2003, a female Ibex was cloned and lived several minutes before dying of a terrible lung deformity. Now this is possible because the biopsies that we took of the last living Ibex were very good. The science was there, the DNA was intact, we knew what to do with it when we collected the samples in the first place, and that's why we were able to clone this animal in comparison to animals that died out even decades before that. So we can definitely clone them, we just have to make sure that we're able to clone them in a way they're going to live. And then the problem is we have a female that's cloned. So how is it going to breed and reestablish that subspecies? Number two, and the most famous on the list, by far, the dodo. The dodo bird is, everybody knows it. You're as dead as a dodo. There's phrases named after it. The coat of arms of Mauritius shows one, which is where they're from, by the way. Mauritius is an archipelago. It's a group of islands, especially one larger island, which is kind of close to Madagascar. It's very unique. Some of their fauna is very unique. The dodo was a large flightless bird. It's seen as dumb and a little bit clumsy. And that's just because these animals, they didn't really have to escape predation where they were. There were no natural predators there, or at least none that were gonna decimate the species and they weren't afraid of humans at all. So when Dutch sailors showed up in 1598, they could just walk up to the birds and there was no fear on the part of these birds, which is obviously very strange and different than what these sailors would be used to in other places they've landed. So this Dutch ship shows up in 1598 and it only took 64 years until the last confirmed sighting of the dodo. This is quick work and maybe one of the quickest extinctions from humans showing up until the animal is gone of all time. Now it's also thought because of the fact that there are places in Mauritius where these sailors would go nowhere near, they're just too remote, that these birds were probably already in decline. If they could be wiped out in such a short amount of time by sailors who just showed up, it's likely they were already in trouble in the first place. But this is another large bird, just like the great auk, which we'll not talk about today, but is my favorite extinct animal besides number one on the list. This is a giant bird that was wiped off the face of the earth, likely by humans and also invasive predators. But the full genome has been sequenced and there is a very close relative, the Nicobar pigeon. So it is possible that we could create something like a dodo or a dodo of itself, the actual species, in the future. This is something that might be a few years out now, but something that could definitely happen in our lifetime. Number one on the list, my favorite animal of all time, the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger. 
Now, what I've said before in videos, this one right here, which is the most watched video on the channel, thank you for watching, that I believe there is a possibility these animals are still walking the planet to this day. Now, it's thought that in mainland Australia, these animals were, well, extinct uh, over 3,000 years ago. 36 to 3,200 years ago, these animals were wiped off of the face of Australia, the actual big land mass, and then you only found them in Tasmania. Same thing with New Guinea. New Guinea is another place that these animals occurred and probably the most likely place if for some reason they still exist, whether you think it's possible or not, entertain this. The New Guinea singing dog was thought to be extinct until 2016 and guess what? They were found in New Guinea because that is a different planet basically in terms of how remote it is. It is just the most unique place on earth or one of them. So is it possible they're still around in New Guinea? Yes. Is it possible they're still around in Australia? Well, there are sightings every single year, but it is unlikely because the reason that they went extinct there in the first place. There is something called a dingo there. Now the dingo is a very cool canid species that you probably have heard about before. Dingo ate my baby, that whole thing. And usually if a dingo is gonna be there, it's thought that the thylacine can't. Because although thylacines have a stronger bite, they aren't able to subdue prey in the same way that dingoes are. Dingoes are pack animals that are able to subdue prey much better. Not only that, but they're omnivorous. So because they're not a hyper carnivore, they are able to, if they can't find prey items, they can go ahead and eat things that are not meat to sustain themselves, something the thylacine couldn't. So the dingoes would likely be out competing though. Anyway, the whole point is they're probably not around in Australia. And although not declared extinct until 1982, the very last last one in captivity was at the zoo in Hobart, Hobart Zoo. But either way, the fact we have a video of this animal, look at the way it walks. Look at the 80 degree angle that his mouth can open at. Look at those amazing stripes on the back. And this was the biggest carnivorous marsupial. And now the biggest is the Tasmanian devil, which still exists to this day. This, in, in my opinion, is one of the coolest mammals on the planet. I'm a reptile guy, reptiles are my thing, but if thylacines were still around today, you better believe I would do whatever possible to still work with them. And although there were de-extinction efforts in the early 2000s when this was brand new as a theory or something that could possibly happen, they were thwarted and by 2005, they were no longer in effect. However, in 2022, something amazing happens. The University of Melbourne with Colossal Bioscience, they teamed up together and they are sure they'll be able to recreate the thylacine in our lifetime. And I'm here for it and I can't wait. Let me know in the comment section below what's your favorite extinct animal and if it was possible, would you clone it or at least try to reproduce that animal to bring it back today, de-extinct it? Let me know in the comment section below. Please hit the like, please hit the subscribe, really helps the channel. And let me know what video do you wanna see next week? I'll see you then.